and I've had the pleasure of working with them all this last week as they've finally gotten to come together and play for the first time together as a band. We're going to begin this show with uh, our warm-ups, which we call the Lesson 5 Scale Patterns. The first piece we've got for you this, this afternoon is uh, a piece written by the Stillwater Middle School director, Michael Walk. It's called Medieval Mode Songs, and it, uh, it does a nice job of reflecting the character and the feelings that came to us during the medieval period. So I hope you enjoy Medieval Mode Songs. So I'm wondering if any of you out there are wondering, what are they doing? 
Those look like five-gallon buckets. And if you look way in the back, there's some big garbage cans, too. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Robin Vaut, and I am the director of bands at Oakland Middle School. Uh, this is about my third year being able to work with the sixth graders in the Instrument Explosion 2.0, and what a treat this has been. As Mr. Bryan suggested, these fifth graders started their musical journey here in Stillwater under the most difficult of circumstances. When they signed up for band at the end of fourth grade, we told them it was going to be so much fun. They were going to get to be together with their friends and their classmates. And we were going to be able to make music together. And then we couldn't. So we tried to figure out how to do this virtually. And they had wonderful teachers that, uh, that, that worked with them and created lessons that were online. And then we got back together and all. And, under the most difficult of circumstances. And so I want to thank you, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, friends and neighbors, that supported your children through that first very difficult year. Um, it's kind of like when you get the new puppy, right? The kids, oh, it's gonna be so great, I'll take care of the puppy. And then moms and dads sometimes end up taking care of the puppy, but you made sure that these kids were taking care of their own puppy. You were making sure that they continued to practice and that they were taking good care of their instruments and that they were attending their lessons virtually and online at the time that they were supposed to attend. So we all thank you for your support and your encouragement. And I hope you're hearing what has happened in the past couple of days. Uh, they came in, they've really never played in a full band setting before. And uh, so we had to go through some stuff. We had to learn rehearsal procedures. Uh, what does it mean when the, when the director steps up onto the podium, onto the box? And how do we work together and listen to the different things? So I am just so proud of the amazing work that these students have done uh, in four short days. And I can't wait to see about half of them over at Oakland Middle School here in a couple of weeks. So let's get back to the buckets. What on earth are we doing with buckets out in front of us? So the, um, the last year has given us opportunities, right? We're not gonna call them problems or challenge. We're gonna call them, them opportunities to rethink the way we teach things. So at the beginning of the year last year, we were not allowed to use band instruments in band class. And so we were challenged by delivering musical instruction in band, and oh, by the way, you can't use the students' instruments. So we kind of switched things up, and we started delivering instruction using, on rhythm at least, using five-gallon buckets and the mallets that your children are going to bring home um, from their experience today. I made them all promise not to strike out at their siblings with their mallets. So they, they already took an oath on that. So um, if they do, you can tell them they broke their oath. Uh, but anyway, so we've been able to isolate rhythm reading. We've been able to create some different sounds playing on the side of the bucket, on the top of the bucket, on the rim of the bucket. And it's all designed to help, um, to, uh, uh, help them with their rhythm and to, to isolate that one skill um, through their rhythm reading. So we are going to use a piece of software. It's an online software uh, called Smart Music. Um, they are going to be watching the two screens out to the sides of the stage here, and uh, we're going we're gonna to give this a try and see what they've learned on Rhythm 4-4, four, four, Slow. opportunity to celebrate human existence through music. 
We look at music from different cultures. We look at music that celebrates different things in our lives. We look at history through music. We looked at the medieval modes and the medieval times through uh, music that is built around uh, the different tonalities that were available to musicians back in then. Um, we have just celebrated human uh, triumph and human uh, uh, strength and endurance and um, perseverance through the Olympics in the last few weeks, and I believe the Paralympics are starting up soon. So we thought, what a great opportunity to uh, carry that forward um, with our rendition of The Bugler's Dream, which is the Olympic theme. Stillwater Bands will be celebrating 100 years of musical excellence. You, your families, your musicians are part of a tradition that dates back a century. And we look forward to all the work that we're on, the journey that we're going to be taking together over the next five or six years. So again, we thank you for joining us this afternoon. Your children are going to be ready to get picked up here in about 10 minutes after they take all their buckets back to the band room. But we thank you. We celebrate uh, your music. We celebrate your children. And we thank you so much for this opportunity to work with you and your families. Have a wonderful rest of your summer, and we'll see you at the middle schools. This is our first concert ever. We didn't get to play last year in a concert setting. Um, and I want to introduce some very special people that have been working with our students. Um, we have Lisa St. Ors, who teaches at Stillwater Middle School and the GATE program. We have Kirsty Petraborg. She is a member of the Lux String Quartet and a professional violist. And I am Julie Vanderstappen, and I teach over at Oakland Middle School. And we've been the three main staff members to work with the students this week while at camp. And we give, oh, a big round of thanks to Ms. Harold, who has put a lot of time into the organization part of our sixth grade camp. We are so excited to have your students at middle school, and we will be communicating a lot with you uh, about how to help keep your student motivated and engaged. And we're going to be asking for your help to schedule those regular practice moments at home, because I remember when I was in middle school, that was something that was challenging for me to organize my life and, and make myself do. We're going to go ahead and get started, and we're going to do some variations on the D scale.
I'm sure you're clapping wildly at home right now. They really do sound fabulous. And what's so exciting is for some students, this camp experience was the first time they got to play with another live human being. If they were online learning all year last year, this was our first opportunity to play together. For other students, this was our first opportunity to play in a large group of students. So I think they've done a tremendous job learning how to coordinate and stay together and be synchronized. And then in the variations of the D scale, you heard some exposure to harmony. In sixth grade, we're gonna be working on playing in harmony a lot, which means you're gonna hear more than one note at the same time that blend together in a pleasing manner. Um, we're going to move on to our next piece, which is called French Folk Song. And this one is a challenge for our brains because instead of counting to four, like we have trained ourselves to do almost the entire time of our first year of playing, we're now going to count to three in our heads for each measure of music. Next is chicken on a fence post. So the scale that we played and the French folk song use quarter notes the most. Lots of these students learn those as tas, and now we're gonna add some ta Ds into the mix, which are faster notes, professional music musicians call eighth notes. Now, in fifth and in sixth grade, we are in the process of transitioning our students from the ta and the ta di to the professional musical language. So you might also be able to have conversations with your students about those things. You can ask them, what did you learn in orchestra today? Or what songs did you play? Um, was there something special about those songs that your teacher worked on? So you don't have to know a lot about music yourself to be able to have a conversation with your child about what they're doing in orchestra class. Thank you. 
Thank you. Again, I am sure you are just clapping like crazy people, maybe even um, waving to your child up on the stage. Hey, everybody on stage, wave to your mom and dad out there. Okay, fabulous. Okay, smile. Even though you're in your mask, they can still tell with your eyes. Okay. Yes, we're smizing right now. Okay, and now we're going to do a song called Biolem Cabbage Down. It is a fiddle tune. And the cello and the basses are going to be doing a slap pizzicato part. So I want to have our cellos and basses demonstrate this, please. So go ahead and set your bows down if you haven't already. And it's pits slap, pits slap. So I just want to make sure we've got our music ready for our cello bass players. They have a special part. Here we go. Cello bass demonstration. One, two, three, four. Fabulous. Thank you. And violins and violas, they learned something called a slide. Now, this is optional right now if students want to experiment with this. And so they can take their F sharp finger, move it behind the tape, and then slide up to it. Let's play this violins and violas and demonstrate this for parents. Now, we have four F sharps in a row, so we only slide on that first one, okay? So some students are feeling like ready to add something a little more sophisticated like that, so we're going to, again, let them choose to do that if they want to. So here is Biolem Cabbage Down. Okay, I forgot to introduce some very important people. These are high school volunteers that have come in to work with our students. And they have been so valuable. And um, they, some of them even played for our students and I think provided a lot of inspiration of knowing this is what we can accomplish later after we've learned a few more things. Um, so I'm gonna have you stand up when I say you, your name, Nate Sherman, cello. Hannah Tran, violin. Gracie Bancroft, violin. Did I get them all? Yeah. OK. Fabulous. Let's, let's give them a round of applause as an orchestra. Okay. See, they've learned so many things. Don't you wish you could get your child that quiet that easily? That's amazing, isn't it? So here is an oldie but a goodie. If you're a Queen fan, you will love this. This is We Will Rock You. Okay, you might see a little thrashing of hair around, okay?
thank you so much for sharing your students with us. It has been a blast. I think everybody in here has evolved, learned something new, and um, as you go through your journey of sixth grade orchestra, if there's anything that your orchestra teacher can help you with, please reach out and ask. We are so willing to help you find a private lesson teacher if you want to, your student wants to see how good I can get or maybe needs a little extra help to feel comfortable and successful. We are so willing to give your students some extra music if, if as a teacher we get stuck on a song a little while and a, some students still need a little extra to do. So please reach out and ask. We'd love to be you know, able to just intrinsically know what your student might need, but we might not always. Um, so again, it has been a pleasure, and I hope that you have enjoyed this experience too. Thank you.